So I wanted to bring you guys along for a little what a day in the life of SHOT Show looks like for someone like me. Unfortunately, my microphone is not working. So I'm gonna have to do a little voiceover for this and still show you some of the behind the scenes of what it looks like to have a, a day at SHOT Show. Now this isn't typical for everybody, but this is what it looks like for me. What you won't see is some of the parties and some of the other things like that, uh, but this is strictly SHOT Show and some of the stuff we did after. But I have to start off by giving a big thanks to Big Tex Ordnance who made this trip happen for me. Big thank you to them. Uh, they also hooked me up with a ton of really cool stuff so I was able to give out a bunch of gift cards, swag packs, shirts, a ton of stuff to people as I was walking around. I also had Taylor, Preston, and Price there to help me do that. So big thank you to Big Tex again for making that happen and the guys for helping me hand everything out. So once we gathered all of our stuff, we head down to the show. Now I like to go to the show a little bit later than everybody else. I'm not there right when the door is open because I hate the big crowds and everybody being stuck there. So I, I kind of mosey my way in a little bit later than everyone else. Um, you got to walk through the casino, lots of walking on this trip. Uh, you go through the casino, you make your way down restaurant row, you eventually make it into where the show is. And it's crazy because there's people from all walks of life here. You've got the, the business executives, you, you have the people buying guns, you have media, all kinds of stuff. And you get to catch up with old friends. So it was cool that I got to hang out with Bruiser. And this is actually one of the cooler moments that I've had in recent memory. Bruiser gave me a sealed trident. Now, I, I'm friends with other guys who have done cool guy jobs, but the friendship that Joe and I have developed over the past year or so two years. Uh, it's been awesome to call him friend and the conversations we've had. So coming from him, it really meant a lot. So after that, uh, the other guys were still sleeping in. So Joe and I decided to go ahead and go into the show. And he essentially gave me a crash course on precision guns and bolt guns. And so basically he took me around and walked me through um, everybody that he knew in the industry. And it felt like he knew literally everyone. And so every time we stopped, somebody there knew him and talked about his time um, in the service, but also his time competing. And we looked at some of the new guns and new things that are coming out. This was actually very insightful, insightful for me as somebody who's wanting to get into bolt guns to have somebody like Joe walk you around the floor of essentially every manufacturer out there right now. Anybody who's making actions, anybody who's making chassis, making stocks, triggers, barrels, suppressors, optics, you name it. And so Joe was able to give me a ton of insight into what to look for in bolt guns, um, things that will really make a difference and things that won't. And then eventually we came across some more friends of mine, the guys from Triple Feed. So Jerry and Luis were there and they uh, they shared a little bit about their, their new product coming out this year. Now again, I'm very sorry, microphone wasn't working, but needless to say, check them out. I will leave a link down below. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. For those of you who ran the previous mag holder they had, it was super cool and so they've made it more adaptable for different plate carriers and chest rigs. So go check out Triple Feed. They've got some cool stuff coming out and great training too. So if you're out on the West Coast, check them out. They've got some training and Jerry and Luis are just uh, great guys and, and the rest of their crew. So very excited to see that when it drops. From there, we continue to move on. Uh, still looking at precision stuff, looking at some Badger ordnance, looking at uh, some different suppressors from a company that I had never heard of until Joe introduced me. It was cool to hear his insight on product that he used both when he was in as a SEAL instructor and then also as a competitor and now continues to use and looks forward to using as just a civilian instructor. So really cool to, to get a firsthand look at things from Joe's perspective. Taylor, Price and Preston finally decided to wake up and they met us down on the floor. Uh, inevitably, anytime we go anywhere, Price runs into somebody he knows. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Price is still active in the military and unfortunately for us, constantly runs into people that know him and so we have to stop and wait for 30 minutes. So I've moved on to the main room. At SHOT Show, for those of you who have never been, there's you have the big main floor, where which is where like all the big names are and that's where we're at at this point. Uh, before that, we were in some of the smaller rooms, and so these smaller rooms are spread out throughout the convention center. Um, there's probably, I think, like seven of them, seven or eight different of these like small rooms or like uh, areas that have stuff that isn't on the main floor. Stopped by Beretta, saw JJ Ricaza, checked out the new stuff from Holosun, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about Holosun, but if you're you know indifferent to it, it's pretty cool. Found some more friends, found Fisher. Uh, it was cool to run into him. Uh, just two giants since I felt super small over there. Checked out Leopold. Uh, inevitably had to check out Smith & Wesson because, you know, all the M&P boys. Uh, checked out some of the new GP and VGs from L3. Very cool stuff there. And also, again, this is one of the things that's cool to hear Joe talk about his experience uh, using night vision when he was in. And lastly, went to Night Force. Got to see they had some of their, uh, their contract uh, optics on contract guns. And then while we were there, I think Lucas was having a, a meeting with them. So interested, interested to see some of his long range stuff coming out and then went by Seekins Precision, which hopefully I can get my hands on a Seekins hit in the very near future and get into bolt guns. I'm looking forward to that, uh, or maybe even a gas gun and just jumping up in caliber. One thing I, I didn't get video of was we did stop by the Sons of Liberty booth and the homies there were incredible. So it was super cool. Uh, they always hooked me up with stuff. They hooked me up with a ton of patches, but the coolest thing they gave me was 
this flask and cigar holder. So thank you again to, to you know who you are. That sounds really, you guys are awesome. Um, and then uh, after that, you know, we went back to the room. We had a, more things that we had to get to uh, throughout the night. So when we left there, we ended up going to the desert to go shoot and test some night vision stuff. So that was a ton of fun. Inevitably, spoiler alert, like that video will come later, but spoiler alert, the Raid XE and the Ingal didn't even make it through zeroing. They both broke. So the full power pack is still running strong and is still king of the lasers right now. Uh, but I did talk to Wilcox and I talked to L3. Both of those are going to get sent back. They're going to look at them and then they're going to get back to us. They're going to fix them and then get back to us on, on what the issue was. I can say that the uh, raid is a known issue. Uh, I will touch on that when we do the, the laser comparison, but that's coming down the road. So uh, went and mobbed out in the desert, beautiful sunset, had a bunch of fun out there with the homies, came back and... Um, which you guys haven't seen yet because this video is coming out later, but at uh, Zona, we went to Zona. In the competition part of that, uh, I was running my, my Staccato, and you guys know that I've been having a love-hate relationship with that gun because I've been having issues with it. It finally broke, it finally died, and Jeremy from Vulcan Machine Works, love you Jeremy, uh, did a little surgery on my, my Staccato in the hotel room, uh, got me back up and running, and then I made my way down to, so when you go to SHOT Show, it's like tradition, you have to go to the Circle Bar. I've got like a good 10 minutes in me at Circle Bar and then I, I got to move on. But it was cool to to finally get to meet Slade uh, face to face uh, or in person. Him and I had talked online a little bit and he sent me a care package. So thanks homie for that. I appreciate it. But I uh, got to chat with him a little bit about some upcoming things. And then this is Mac. Uh, Mac and I had a great conversation. I actually talked to all of us at the Nevesky party talking about some long range stuff. So looking forward to shooting with him and some stuff. Maybe we'll get some content with him in the future. Ran into the uh, Vulcan homies again. Nick is the mastermind behind the Cerakote jobs there. Uh, Jeremy was talking with some guys from Brownells. And then Remy was just ready to get his drink on. So decided to go for a little walk. Uh, had to go meet up with the guys for dinner. Um, so made my way down the, down the strip and took photos along the way. Decided to stop at Caesars Palace just because it's an iconic place. And every time I've been to Vegas, I've yet to gamble at Caesars Palace. So I told my brother I'd go put some money on, on 13 for him. We did not hit, unfortunately. But it was cool. Uh, and enjoyed the nice little peaceful walk after you know being in the show all day long. And we finally made our way to Beauty in Essex, which is a speakeasy type restaurant inside the Cosmopolitan. Uh, phenomenal food. Couldn't take any photos in there. But I did get this one photo right before we went in of Price. He was feeling really, really nice at this point in the day. And uh, we had phenomenal meal, phenomenal drinks, and just it was an all around great time to hang out with the homies, but also get to hang out with some friends from in the industry that I don't get to see very often. So it was great to just spend some time together and, and be out there and then ended the night uh, on Taylor's balcony. He balled out and decided to drop all this money for a hotel at the Cosmo that had a terrace all the way around and had a great view of the fountains and just of the, the Vegas Strip. So that is what a day at SHOT Show looks like from somebody like me. And it was just an awesome time. And and it's, it's not for everybody, you know, doing the, the whole thing. And it's not, it, at times it can look like a ton of fun, uh, but at times it also is a lot of work, right? There's a lot of meetings, a lot of talking to people and planning stuff out for the next year and uh, trying to do research about product and things like that. And I, I will tell you, like, the only advice I would give to you as people who are watching this, who, who aren't in the industry, but are looking for the new things that are coming out. At, keep in mind that as the new stuff rolls out from SHOT Show, as the new stuff rolls out and people are putting out content from, you know, whatever, which, by the way, if you're interested in some of the new products, go check out Roger from QVO Tactical. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. But he did a great job covering a lot of the new products and some really cool stuff that came out. So go check out Roger and go subscribe to his YouTube channel because he's been having issues with YouTube on that. But... At, keep in mind that as you're looking at this stuff, as you're looking at new product that comes out, take it all in with a grain of salt, right? Don't feel obligated to get the new best thing or the new shiny thing because it's the new thing. Sometimes it will improve. It's an improvement on whatever the previous version was. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just a minor tweak. And I, I would say that the key thing to keep in mind, especially with everything's going on with, you know, braces and, you know, new laws being proposed, ammunition and magazines and just whatever, is that new product that you're looking at, is it gonna help you accomplish the mission in a way that your current stuff isn't, right? So whether that's a new gun, a new optic, a new whatever, right? Is it gonna help you do something that you can't currently do, or is it going to make you more efficient in doing the thing you're trying to achieve than the current stuff you have? If it's not, you don't, you probably don't really need it. Save that money, spend it on ammo, spend it on training, spend it on things that, that are probably gonna be more valuable down the road. But don't get sucked into the trap of buying all the new latest and greatest gear. Um, some of it is better for sure, but not always. So just keep that in mind. I, I just don't want you guys to go, you know, 
be drooling over stuff and then waste money on stuff when you could be putting that into training and, and ammunition. So, um, but that's, yeah, that's my day. That's my advice for you guys. Uh, there's more content coming out from this trip. Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff from Arizona we haven't shown yet and a whole new series I'm very excited about. So make sure that like and subscribe, karate chop that bell to so get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one.